Microsoft just released the new Copilot function, which means you can now have AI inside your spreadsheets. Now, whether that excites you or scares you, in this video, I'm gonna share 17 different ways to use the Copilot function. We'll cover everything from saving time with data cleanup tasks to planning your next road trip or potluck. So let's go. All right, so now in any cell, we can type equals copilot and we have the new copilot function. This essentially allows us to prompt chat GBT and return results to the spreadsheet. So here I want to split out all of these items from this list here and just return the items. So for my prompt in quotes, I'm going to type, please extract only the items from the following data and create a comma separated list for each row. And so there is my prompt. I'm gonna close the quotes on that. Then I'm going to type a comma. And the second argument is the context. This is where I reference the data. So I can just reference a single cell. I'll go ahead and do that first, and then I'll hit enter. Copilot will take a second to calculate. And as you can see, it extracts all of the items from the list over here. Now I could copy this formula down, but that's going to cause Copilot to then have to call the function several times for all the items in the list. So another way we can do this, I'm gonna control Z, is we can go back to our formula here. Instead of just referencing cell B4, I can reference this entire range. And I'll go ahead and do that and hit enter. And Copilot is then going to return a spill range with all of the results. So I'm now just calling the formula one time and sending all of this data through and Copilot processes all of that and returns it to the spill range. And passing the range through like this is important because there are usage limits with Copilot and we can use the spill range in other formulas and we'll take a look at that later in the video. And it's also important to note that Copilot is using ChatGPT to parse all of this data. It's not writing a formula in the spreadsheet, but this is pretty amazing because it would be a difficult formula to write since a lot of these items are separated by different characters like we can see down here. Sometimes the name is in the front, sometimes the name is at the end. So this is pretty messy data and the fact that we can quickly split this out by just prompting ChatGPT is pretty incredible. And if I wanted to separate these items into columns, I can just change my prompt to do that. So right here, I'm going to say, and put each item in a separate column for each row, and then hit enter. Copilot will take a few seconds to figure that out. And now each of the items is in a separate column. So we can shape the output of the data by just modifying the instructions in our prompt, which is really pretty amazing. And the copilot function can also handle context from multiple ranges, which is really nice. So in this example here, I also want to return the name or extract the name out of this text over here and the list of items. So for this, again, we'll say equals copilot. We'll tab into that, type quotes, and I'm gonna say, please parse the following data. We'll put quotes on that. And then the first context, again, will be all of our data right here. So we'll select that, type a comma, and we can also continue to add prompts to this. So my second prompt, I'm again gonna type quotes and say, into the following columns. And we'll close quotes on that and type a comma. And now I can specify another context or range. So this is the column or column headers that I want to put the data in. And I'm just going to select these column headers because they're descriptive. The first one says name, the second one says items. Copilot will interpret all of that, figure all that out for me, and put uh, the data in the right places. So we'll go ahead and hit enter here. Copilot will take a second to figure all that out and run. And as you can see, it's returning the name in this column here, and then the list of items in the second column. And I'll put a link in the description where you can download this Excel file for free so you can grab all of these prompts and examples. Now, if you've ever hosted a potluck, you know how challenging it can be to not end up with five veggie platters and 12 different desserts. And here we are halfway through our, our potluck uh, signup sheet here. And let's have Copilot help us out with this. So we get a good mix of different uh, types of food, not only desserts and veggie platters, but also some main entrees as well. So what I did here was the first thing I did was have Copilot categorize all of the items that people are currently bringing, that they've currently signed up for. And I did that in this column here. So we could see the formula. I said, categorize these items for potluck and return the category only. So that is what I passed through there. And of course, Copilot categorized all the items. 
Then in the next prompt here, I said, make the suggestions on the items to bring for this potluck for each of the blank rows based on what people are bringing and what items might be missing. So in this case, Copilot is actually going through this list of items here in column C, and when it sees a blank, it's determining that that item's still missing, and we need to not only fill that in, but fill it in with either a category or an item that someone isn't bringing yet. And I asked it to include the category for each item. And so I'm passing through both columns C and D, and as you can see, it essentially just filled in all of the blank rows with suggestions for what someone can bring, so some additional drinks, uh, pasta salads, and so on. And again, since this is returned in a spill range here, we can do additional operations on it. So over here, I used the new group by function to create a quick summary report to give me a count of all of the items by category. So this way I can quickly see that we have four appetizers, five desserts, and a good variety of other items, not just a ton of desserts and veggie platters here, but a nice variety for our party. And one important thing to note is that the copilot function recalculates whenever a cell is changed in a range that it references. So for example, let's go down here and we'll say that Natalie, instead of uh, the suggested fruit kebabs, she's decided to bring hot dogs. So we'll just put hot dogs right here, hit enter. As you can see, the function recalculates. It determines that this category is a main and it puts hot dogs here. And then it's also going to recalculate everything else in terms of the suggestions to balance that out. In this example, I've used Copilot to create a meal planner. So here I have a list of ingredients on hand along with the quantity in this table. And over here I have my Copilot formula. So I've said, please give me a list of seven meals that I can cook for dinner based on the list of following ingredients that I have on hand. If the quantity is zero, then I don't have the item. Assume that I also have access to a cabinet of spices, oils, and other essentials for cooking. And then I've just referenced the entire table as the context there. So it has both the list of ingredients and the quantity. And as you can see here, it came back with a list of items. Now, as my quantity change, let's say I get uh, by a bag of broccoli, I'll just put that there. Copilot's going to recalculate and it's using now broccoli in one of the suggestions. So this way you can continue to build out and maintain this list of items you have on hand and then Copilot will make suggestions for you. Next, we'll look at a very challenging data cleanup task of splitting names. So here I wanna split all of these names into these different components. I've already written my Copilot formula and I'll paste it in here. So my prompt is to split the following names in this column into these columns. I'm just referencing the headers here. Hit enter, Copilot will take a few seconds to run. And as you can see, it split all of the names. It did a pretty good job, but there is one issue here where we have a title, or in this case, the name does not have a title. It's putting the first name in the title column. And of course, we don't want that, but we can just change the prompt. So out here at the end of the formula, I'm just gonna click in here and type a comma and specify prompt number three. I'll put quotes, and then I'm going to say, if a component doesn't exist, you can skip that cell. And then we'll just close the quotes on this and hit enter and let it run. And now we have a blank title here and the first name in the correct column. Now this is using a large language model and it's doing its best guess at some of these. So you'll still want to check these. Uh, this here could be a middle name. It could be part of a first or last name, but I think overall it does a pretty good job. And if you're wondering how I'm speaking these phrases into my computer instead of typing, that's with a voice to text app called Whisperflow, which has saved me a ton of time and basically tripled my productivity. I have a separate video that covers it in more detail and I'll link that up in the description below. In this example, I use the Copilot function to create a road trip planner. So here is my prompt up here. The first part is to say, please create an itinerary for a road trip based on the stops and number of days in this table. The second part of the prompt is specifying that this is a family road trip with kids that have the following interests in this table. And then I've also included uh, that we want suggestions for breakfast, lunch, and dinner based on the food preferences and dietary restrictions in this table. So passing in all of that information, Copilot created this table right here with an itinerary for the seven days of our trip, including activities and spots to stop at for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
And again, the great part about this is it's all dynamic. So since we were closer to the Canadian border, we might want to have French food instead of Mexican food. Of course, we can just update that. Copilot's going to recalculate and then give us new suggestions. Now, I actually created this after our trip, but it was pretty cool to see that we actually visited some of these restaurants and places that Copilot is recommending. Next, we'll look at another painful Excel task, which is categorizing bank statements. So here in this blue table, I have my bank statement. I have all these descriptions here that I need to categorize in this column. Over here, I have the category mapping table. So essentially what I'm doing is an X lookup to look up the description in this table over here and return the category. Now, when X lookup doesn't find the description in the table, it's right now going to return an NA error. And so over here, I have a list of all of the descriptions that currently have an NA error that are uncategorized. For that, I'm using the filter function to filter down this description for all of the NA errors. I'm using the isNA function for the include argument or the filter criteria there. And then just using the unique function to return a list of unique values. So these are all of my uncategorized descriptions. And then Copilot comes into the mix in this next column here for the categorization. So here I'm using the Copilot function. I'm saying classify each description in J5 hash. So in this spill range here of uncategorized items into one of the following categories. And M5 to M19 is this table over here. This actually should be a table reference, but this is this table over here with my category list. And so Copilot does its magic to uh, essentially categorize all of these items. And then of course we could modify these if needed, but once we have these in place, all I'm going to do here is hit Control C to copy, and then I'm going to paste values right here to the bottom of my category mapping table. And then the X lookup will recalculate over here and all of my items will be categorized. And when I get new items, maybe next month or however this updates, I have some new items here, so I'm gonna cut those paste them to the bottom of my table. Now we can see we have NA errors here because we don't have uh, these descriptions yet in our table over here, but Copilot has essentially done all the work. Our formulas are all uh, calculating through. Copilot's already done the work here to categorize those for me. Again, I could go look at these, make sure they're correct, and then just copy and paste them to the bottom of this table to categorize the new items. I went through this pretty quickly. Leave a comment below this video if you'd like me to create a separate video that goes into this setup in more detail. Another great use for the Copilot function is sentiment analysis. So here I have a list of product reviews and I wanna know if the reviews are positive or negative. So in this column over here, I've used the Copilot function. Here's the formula and it says, please analyze the following reviews in cells uh, C4 to C19 based on the following column headers. So again, I'm providing additional context by just specifying these headers here, which is a rating of one to five and then positive or negative. I don't necessarily have to type all of this out that I want that because I'm just referencing these cells that contain that information. And as you can see here, Copilot goes through each of these uh, cells and determines the rating and the positive or negative. And then for the stars, this is just using an Excel formula with the repeat and unichar function. We have a separate video on this formula and I'll link that up in the description below. In this example, I used Copilot to create a seating planner. So these are the results of a survey for people coming to an event. And essentially I wanted Copilot to assign each person a table number to allow them to sit next to other people that have similar interests. This is the prompt here, and I'll put a link in the description below where you can download this Excel file for free. And of course, this is a very difficult task, uh, but Copilot did a fairly good job of at least grouping some people together with common interests. Next, I'm gonna go through several complex data cleanup tasks that Copilot can help with. Here I have all different types of date formats in this column, and if I wanted to standardize those into one format, I've used Copilot for that. This is the formula, just said please standardize these dates in this column here in the following format, and that format is here in cell C3, so you could change the format here if you'd like. And of course, it went through those and returned all the correct dates. In this example, we're standardizing company names. So here we have uh, several different spellings 
or interpretations of the same company. And of course, we could use Copilot to clean all of this up and standardize it. Now, in this example here, we have a lot of duplicates. So the first thing I did, and I recommend doing this, is create a list of unique names or unique values from your original list, especially if you have thousands of rows of data. And then I used the Copilot function to standardize this unique list. And once I have that, then I used an XLOOKUP to essentially look up this original name in this table over here and return the corrected name. Again, this is just for efficiency. So Copilot isn't running on thousands of rows. There are limitations on how many rows and how much data you can run Copilot on and how many calls to the function you can do per hour. So it's important to use practices that will help you make this more efficient and reduce the amount of times that you use it. I'll put a link in the description to the Copilot help page that'll have more information on those limitations as I am sure they will change as the Copilot function goes through beta. In this example, I want to extract the details of these orders into separate columns. So here is my formula to parse the following text in this column into uh, these components here in this header. Go ahead and hit enter and let Copilot do its magic. And here we have all of the order components in separate columns. And this would be pretty challenging, if not impossible, to write a formula to do this because sometimes the colors are two words, sometimes the product names are two words, and so on. In this example, I need to categorize each of these customer support ticket issues into one of the following categories. So we'll go ahead and run that. And the nice part is that Copilot is going to read through all of these and take its best guess at which of these categories each belongs to. It's not going to randomly create new categories. We are able to restrict the results to just the categories we have in this table. Next, we'll take a look at cleaning up semantic duplicates. And that really just means that we have a lot of different variations of this same name here, the same phrase. These are all the iPhone 15. So here is my prompt to please identify the semantic duplicates and return standardized name for each product. Hit enter, let Copilot do its thing. And as you can see, it's now created just these standardized names for each of these products. And again, this would be a very challenging task to do with regular formulas in Excel. In this example, I have all of these job titles here, and I'd like to group and count all of these so we can see how many employees we have in each major role. But all of these job titles have a lot of extra stuff that just kind of makes them messy. So I've used Copilot here to clean it all up. And the prompt is to remove the seniority levels and contract type info from these job titles, just keeping the core role only. And of course, it did all of that work. And now I could use this in either a pivot table or a group by formula to quickly sum this up. Another challenging data cleanup task is addresses. Here I've used Copilot to clean up and standardize these addresses based on the USPS style with abbreviations. But of course, you could change this to your local region and whatever address style you use the most to again, just quickly clean up all of these addresses and make them easier to read. In this final example, I have a list of product combinations that customers have purchased from us in the past, and I'm using Copilot to help me draft emails to essentially recommend products that the customer has not yet purchased. So here the customer has purchased a dock, and this is saying since you've purchased a dock, consider purchasing these other products to enhance your setup. And then we can take this information and over here I have a list of customers and the items they've purchased and then do a lookup back to that table to essentially fill this out for every single customer. So the Copilot function is still in beta at the time of this recording. And as I mentioned, I'll put a link in the description to the help page that will answer questions on availability and usage limits. I'm curious to know which of these techniques you'll be trying out. So leave a comment below and let us know. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you wanna learn other ways to use AI to automate your workflows, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.